During the post-processing of my images, I use shortcuts in Photoshop very frequently to speed up my processing. And I want to go over some of them. And as an example, I'm using a final processing of this image here and a sharpening layer which I created. And I want to apply this sharpening selectively. So let's start with the first shortcut I'm using. I want to apply a black mask on this layer, so I hit Alt and then press on this mask here, which automatically creates a black mask. So now when I want to mask in areas, I want to paint in this mask. And if I press B, this will give me the brush tool. Another shortcut which is very important is for zooming into the image. So I press Ctrl, then the space, and now when I click into the image, this zooms in. If I just pull to the side with the mouse, this zooms in and out. And if I hold Ctrl, space, Alt, and click, this also zooms out. So let's zoom in a bit. The next thing which I usually want to do is change the brush size. So I could either right click onto the layer and then change the size. But it's much easier if I hold down Alt and with the right mouse click onto the image and then pull to the right side to increase the brush size, pull to the left size, uh, side 2 degrees brush size. And also the feathering or well, the soft edge can be changed here, still holding down Alt and the right mouse I'm pulling down to make the edge harder and I'm pulling up to make it softer. So those are very frequently used shortcuts when I'm drawing in masks. Another important thing is changing the opacity up here. I can just use the number keys, for example pressing 0 sets the opacity to 100, pressing 5 makes it 50%. Then currently I have black color as foreground and as drawing color, but I want to draw with white in the mask. So by hitting X, I exchange foreground and background color. And if I have selected some other color here as foreground color, for example some gray or some red or yellow, whatever, and I want to get back to black and white, I just hit D, which brings me back to the black and white, and then with X I can toggle. This is very important. So D, now I have white, go to 50%, and then I just draw on the mask. Control space to zoom in a bit. And now another very important uh, shortcut if I'm zoomed in that far. I'll hold down space to bring me to the hand tool. And then I can just move through the image. And then Control Space Alt to zoom out a bit, space to move, then changing the size, pressing 0 for 100% and drawing. So that's the very basic set of shortcuts which I use. Besides this basic set of shortcuts around drawing and moving of the image. Um, there are some shortcuts uh, to get into the mask or to deactivate it. For example, if I want to see what I've currently drawn the mask, I can just hold down Alt and click on the mask, which brings me into the mask. And then I can continue to draw on this mask if I wanted to. To get out, I just click on the layer again. I can also do, I hold down Shift, Alt, and click on the mask, which shows me the mask area. So the black areas in the mask are now shown as this red overlay. And when I now draw on the mask, I instantly see the mask together with the image. And this is quite nice 
to mask out areas. There's another shortcut. So first let's get back to the normal. I hold down Shift, Alt and click on the mask again. So if I want to deactivate the effect of the mask, I just Shift click on the mask and you see the X here. So the mask is now completely deactivated. Shift clicking again and the mask is active again. So sometimes, let's just bring this mask back to black. Um, I just hold down um, Control Delete, which fills the currently selected area or if there's nothing selected, the complete layer with the background color. So Control Delete background color, which was black in this case, and Alt Delete fills it with the foreground color. If I exchange those colors with X, then also the effects will be exchanged. If I now press Alt Delete, the mask will be filled with black, and if I press Control Delete, it's the opposite. So now if I go to the channels palette and hold down Control and click on a channel, this will select the luminosity of this channel. And if I now go to the mask here and press Alt Delete, then the mask is filled or the selection, the currently selection is filled with black. So I now filled the highlight areas which were selected with black. With Control H, I can hide the marching ants and bring them back. And with Control D, I can deselect. So now I filled the highlights with black, but let's say I wanted to fill, do the opposite. So fill the dark areas. What I can now do while in the mask, I press Control I, which inverts it. So Control I to invert whatever is currently active. So in this case, the mask, if I'm on the main layer and press Control I, it inverts the colors. So let's get back into the mask. There's one last shortcut, which I want to show you in this quick shortcut introduction video. And this is if you draw with, let's say, 100%. Let's draw here some black shape. And you then recognize, oh, that's too much. I wanted to draw it, say, 50 or some other opacity. Then you can use Control Shift F, which brings up the fade dialog. And what you see here is the opacity slider. You can then change the, opac the opacity of the last effect or action you did. This, for example, also works with filters which you apply. So if you do a blur and after applying this blur one to reduce its effect, you can use this shortcut, Control Shift F. But you could also do, you can change the mode of, of this uh, effect you did. So for example, doing soft light. So this would mean that instead of drawing with 100% and normal mode, I would, after those changes, it's like as, I, as if I had drawn at 47% in soft light mode. So this is a quite neat dialogue if you want to adjust your, yeah, your changes afterwards. So this was just a short introduction on shortcuts. Those are the most, my most used shortcuts. There are many more, for example, toggling through the different tools here. So you should just pick up a Photoshop shortcut cheat sheet and, and learn those because it massively enhances your post-processing speed.